Good morning. Good morning. My name is Alyssa, and I'm a clinical social worker. And I know you met with your doctor a couple of weeks ago, and you got a new diagnosis of dementia. And so I'm just wondering how the last couple of weeks have been for you, Colleen. Um, a little worrisome, kind of scary. Mm -hmm. But I'm anxious for the information that I need to have to continue on. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad that you said that because that's the whole purpose of our meeting together today. So my role is primarily to be an emotional support to both of you, to provide you with resources that might be helpful in the community, and then to answer any questions that you have about your diagnosis. Many people leave the doctor's office feeling pretty overwhelmed and scared, mm -hmm. and so I'm sure that there's been many questions that have come into your mind in the last couple of weeks and information that you're hoping to find, so maybe we can start there. Mm -hmm. What, what okay. information are you hoping to talk about today? I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, what about, well, the, the one question that we have, what's the difference between dementia and Alzheimer's? Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that you asked that. That mm -hmm. is the most common question that I get asked. And dementia is an umbrella term that means that someone has cognitive impairment. There are many different kinds of diseases that cause dementia. And Alzheimer's disease is by far the most common type of dementia, usually starting in the hippocampus where people mm -hmm. are struggling with some short-term memory loss. Mm -hmm. uh, Colleen, would you mind telling me a little bit about your experiences and what symptoms you've been noticing? Um, most of the time I feel pretty normal, but there are times when I forget words mm -hmm. to finish a sentence mm -hmm. or... I go into a room for something and, and I don't remember what I went in there for. Mm -hmm. And then I go back to the other room to see if I can remember. And sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. a lot of hit and miss. And I kind of retrace my steps several times a day and mm -hmm. just to find out what's going on and what I'm doing and mm -hmm. what I wanted to do and what I forgot to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kelly, tell me a little bit about your perception and what kinds of things you've been noticing. Mm. With mom, it, it's been, um, I think, harder for her. I mean, her memory, we've noticed, has been increasingly um, challenged at times. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we'll notice that she, she will call and she's almost a little scared or panicky because she can't figure out something or she presents a problem, what should I do? Mm -hmm. So problem solving... Um, we've noticed that that's been a challenge for her. Mm -hmm. Things that are real have been simple or easy for her to do in the past. Yeah. Now she's not quite sure how to handle it. Mm -hmm. So she calls a lot with that. Mm -hmm. um, even so much as um, recipes and cooking, we love to cook together. And mm -hmm. I would always call her for questions on, I'm making this and I don't have it. What can I substitute? Uh -huh. And now she calls me okay. and asks me a lot, of the, a lot of the questions that I would have asked her in the past. Yeah, so kind of a role reversal in that area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's, that's one of the um, areas that I've noticed the most. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes um, just the relationally, um, just being able to process um, emotions and um, perceptions of situations and um, maybe even motive. motive for mm -hmm. people. Um, sometimes that's been hard for her. Mm -hmm. um, it hurt. She seems to, she's been, and may, maybe that comes in, into play because of the inability, or the, um, being able to problem solve or process. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Well, in my experience, I found that my clients find a lot of creative ways to cope with the memory challenges that they're having. And so, Kalina, I'm really curious if you wouldn't mind telling me about some of the things and strategies that you found helpful in dealing with your memory loss. I write a lot of notes on paper. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I remember where they are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of keep track of day-to-day -day things. Mm -hmm. I have a, a planner that I use. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I want to get something done, I write it on the planner, and then I can check it off when it's done if it's not checked. Mm -hmm. then I know I didn't do it. Okay. So that's been real helpful to do. I've used a planner for years, so that's been very helpful for me. Mm -hmm. 
So that's something that you've been doing for a long time. Yes. Yeah. And luckily I can still continue that and, and mm -hmm. keep motivated and keep on track and mm -hmm. and remember birthdays and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So that helps you stay organized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our menus. We do our menus. Yes. Together. Kelly comes over on Saturdays and we see what food I already have mm -hmm. and then we plan the menu from what we have and maybe have to pick up a few things to, to go with that. Okay. Okay. And sometimes I'll just buy something because it looks good, and then we work it into the plan or we use it next week. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really fantastic. Mm -hmm. So that's something that the two of you are kind of partnering together on. And mm -hmm. So it sounds mm -hmm. like in addition to using the planner and writing notes, you're leaning on family members for some support, right. too. And yeah. yeah. And it's time that we have together, too. So we've yes. enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's just time that we can spend together. Yeah, and that's so. something you both enjoy doing, it sounds like, mm -hmm. working together mm -hmm. and... Mm -hmm. Planning the menu out. Yes. Yeah. We have re we have begun to um, make meals in advance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, rather than just make the menu, sometimes we'll make the meal in advance and put it in the freezer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and since there's only two of us at home anymore, some of the recipes I have are for large families or more mm -hmm. or a little less. But um, so then we'll make two containers mm -hmm. and eat one and put one in the freezer or mm -hmm. yeah. several. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's great. That sounds So like then it's already done in advance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, that sounds like that helps you stay really independent and it does. still doing it does. some of the things that you love to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've always enjoyed cooking, so it's mm -hmm. very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that there are two of you living at home. Are you living with a husband? My husband. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many years have you been married? 48. 48 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. So in those 48 years, I'm sure you've learned a lot about communicating with each other. And mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, it's 49. 49 mm -hmm. years. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, I just... Well, congratulations. You have the big 50 coming up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have any plans for, for 50 years? Not so yet. Right? <laughs> it'll, it'll be next May. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm sure we'll come up with something. Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about your husband's reaction to your diagnosis. Um, he was a little concerned at first, but mm -hmm. we did a lot of reading to try and understand what was going on and, and mm -hmm. the progression of the disease and mm -hmm. how things will change. Okay. And he's been absolutely wonderful about it. Mm -hmm. He just he's he's always been very helpful anyway. Mm -hmm. So this is just even more so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like uh, you and your husband really sought out information together, and that yes. gave you some peace of mind about what to expect mm -hmm. for the future. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and I, I think he's read some uh, either books or articles on living with an Alzheimer's person oh, okay. so that he could get information on that side mm -hmm. and how they handled things. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that was real helpful for him, too. Mm -hmm. That's great. You know, in my experience, I found that the families who are the most successful in living with dementia are people who are proactive and learn as much as they can about mm -hmm. the disease um, early on. And so I'm really glad that the two of you have decided to meet with me today and learn even more information and strategies that can help you manage your symptoms of mm -hmm. dementia. And, and I'm really glad that we're here together. Where else can we find additional information? That's a really good question, too. There's so much information out there, and sometimes it can be really mm -hmm. overwhelming just trying to navigate what's good information and what things shouldn't I read and, and what do I need yeah. to know right now. Mm -hmm. And so some of the things that we'll talk about today uh, will hopefully help you with some of the things that you're dealing with right now. There's a lot of really good websites that you can read about online. Mm -hmm. The Alzheimer's Association has a caregiver center where you can learn more about strategies and tips and resources. Um, there's a lot of programs in our community for people who have a new diagnosis and mm -hmm. ways to mm -hmm. connect with other people mm -hmm. who are going through the same experience. Mm -hmm. Is that something that would be interesting to you? Yes. Okay. Yes. The more okay. information, the better. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're definitely. both information gatherers, mm -hmm. it sounds like. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. One thing I, I can say, uh, when when mom got the diagnosis, um, one of the things that they had told us um, it, uh, that how the brain is affected with the Alzheimer's is her motivation or initiative. Mm -hmm. And 
That was very helpful mm. because my mom has talked about doing things and I should and I want to, mm -hmm. but she's mm -hmm. not followed through mm -hmm. okay. for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And so to hear that was really helpful for us to understand. Mm -hmm. That's why, because it's been frustrating to watch her talk about it but not do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so and some so, relief and understanding that's why that's happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so knowing that, what kinds of things have you done to kind of work together to help Colleen follow through with some of the things she wants to do? Phone reminder, sometimes we'll talk about exercise, mm -hmm. how to, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the exercise is supposed to be really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, just call and ask if she's been on the treadmill yet or the bike. Mm -hmm. for the day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes it's not. <laughs> or sometimes it's well received, sometimes it's not. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah. Colleen, how would you prefer that Kelly partner with you to help you do some of those things? Do you have thoughts about what might be most helpful to you? Well, one of the things she has done is made a list of mm -hmm. things that, well, she does plan our menus for the week, mm -hmm. so that helps with food preparation when we're, and I can change the days if we want yeah. to what we want to have. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is making lists of things that I need to accomplish every day. Mm -hmm. So that is really helpful. Mm -hmm. So there's some of those things you're already doing, it sounds like, are helping. Mm -hmm. You stay organized and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. get some of those things done that you feel like doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And also ha giving you the flexibility. If you want to change out the menu to a different day, you right. can Right. Uh, yeah, I can switch them back and forth. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Kelly, I'm really glad that you brought up physical activity because that's one of the things that research has shown over the last couple of years to be one of the most effective ways mm -hmm. to slow down the progression of memory loss. And it sounds like you're nodding, so you already have, you already know that. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm really glad that you are actively trying to bring more of that into your life. Mm -hmm. um, I have a workbook that I'd like to give you, and it's okay. called the Living Well Workbook. And it has a lot of different strategies about ways to get physical activity. Mm. It talks about the research um, on what kinds of nutrition mm -hmm. um, is really helpful to get when you've been diagnosed with memory loss. It talks about ways to engage your brain and things like having a routine, things that can help you manage your symptoms of dementia day to day. Okay. So all of oh, those things good. are really important. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, thank you. Yeah. That would be helpful, I'm sure. Yeah. <coughs> Colleen, tell me a little bit more about your routine. What does that typical day look like for you and your husband? Well, my husband is still working, so mm -hmm. he leaves quite early in the morning. Mm -hmm. And um, usually when I get up in the morning, I eat breakfast right away because sometimes I have low blood sugar and I just need to eat right away so mm -hmm. it doesn't drop. And... Um, I have a list of things that I do. Um, uh, certain days I clean the house or do certain sections of the house mm -hmm. just to, to make it um, easier so I don't have to work really hard one day. Mm -hmm. I just do what I can in the morning or afternoon, whatever I, mm -hmm. whatever I feel like doing. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I can spread that over a couple of days or several days if I want to, just mm -hmm. do a little task each day. Mm -hmm. And that makes it a lot simpler. Too. Yeah, to kind of break it down into smaller steps. Yeah, because it gives me things to do during the day, but yet I feel like I've accomplished something, mm -hmm. and but I'm not working real hard with sweat rolling down my face, mm -hmm. which yeah. I used to. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you've given yourself permission just to take things one day mm -hmm. at a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That can sometimes take the pressure off of having so many things on the to-do list and just mm -hmm. taking what's realistic for one day. and. Mm -hmm. We have to plan a little bit more. Um, Mom isn't driving now, and so okay. we plan days to run errands. Mm -hmm. And um, and we have to be flexible, too. If she's not feeling well that day, then so the whole family is a little bit more flexible. Yeah. But we do plan it so mm -hmm. that we can kind of work towards a, a goal of a day mm -hmm. and have a plan, but know that we have to be very flexible with it. Mm -hmm. So we plan errand running days. Mm -hmm. um, afternoons or lunches or evenings. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do lunches or afternoons sometimes, and my mm -hmm. dad will do evenings with her. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, But since she stopped driving, that's what, what, what we've done. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that decision, Colleen. How did you decide to stop driving? 
Um, I think there was one time when I was driving and I, I came to a four-way stop and I didn't know what to do. Wow. I, I knew there were stop signs. There were no cars around, mm-hmm. so I, I couldn't wait for someone to do this or that. And yeah. and I just sat there for a couple of minutes, and I thought, you know, maybe this isn't something I should continue doing. How scary. Because I didn't want to hurt anybody, and I didn't want to hurt myself. Mm-hmm. So um, we made the decision that I wouldn't drive, and I mm-hmm. gave my car to my son. Yeah. I wish I had it, but <laughs> I, 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 if I had it, I'd probably be in trouble with it, so... Yeah. It was a good thing to to give it away. I think it's normal to have mixed feelings that yeah. in on the one hand you want to be responsible right. and make sure that you're safe if you are driving mm-hmm. and on the other hand it's really hard to give up the keys when you've had that independence for so many years. It was, yes. Yeah. Now I have to make arrangements for running errands and things like that and I really don't like bothering other people. Mhm. So that's, yeah. that's been kind of hard. Mm-hmm. How have you gotten over that feeling of, of not wanting to burden other people? Uh, I don't think you ever get over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still feel that I'm imposing sometimes, but mm-hmm. not with my family. I know they, they're doing this to help me, mm-hmm. but um, it still feels like an imposition mm-hmm. that I'm causing mm-hmm. somebody else to... You don't want to inconvenience yeah. someone mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have people that you regularly rely on for transportation besides family? I I did, but that's kind of ended now, so it's it's going to be mostly my family. Okay. Mm-hmm. Would you be interested in learning more information about other alternatives in the community for transportation? Oh, yes, I would. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'd be happy to look into that for you and that may give you a little bit more freedom and independence as well. There's a couple of um, companies where you can call them up um, and just let them know that you'd like to go to the grocery store or to the library or to a doctor's appointment, and they'll come and pick you up right at your front door. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, that would be great. Yeah, mm-hmm. kind of a cho- chauffeur service. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I will, I'll gather some information before you leave today, and okay. we can go over that together. We have tried to help her with too, so that she doesn't feel bad about calling us and telling us what she wants or needs. Yeah, and um, and when she has, I've reminded her at times that we'll be there. You just tell us, and we can come in and take mm-hmm. you anytime. Mm-hmm. And um, and she said, "But I don't want to bother you." And so we we're finding um, she doesn't remember when we have the conversation, and to tell her that mm-hmm. we're available, mm-hmm. just call us. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. Um, even putting a note, a big sticky note, if you want to go someplace, if you need a ride, call mm-hmm. yeah. Dad or Kelly. That's a really good strategy. So it's mm-hmm. a visual cue of the conversation you had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. so and that it, seems to work pretty well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It can be hard to reach out to other people and feel like you're imposing at times. Yeah, I, I've always been extremely independent, mm-hmm. and I just mm-hmm. do not like relying on other people or interrupting their schedules and mm-hmm. so that kind of weighs heavy on me but I'm getting better about it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah that can kind of feel uncomfortable and I think mm-hmm. that is something that many people who are living with dementia experience as they mm-hmm. have to lean more and more on other people in their lives to partner with them to do mm-hmm. things like um, get them to places or maybe help with other things and that definitely is an adjustment period it takes yeah, some getting used to yeah. One way um, to think about it, if it's okay if I give you a suggestion, Colleen, mm-hmm. um, I don't know, have you volunteered before in your life at, through faith activities yes, or through schools and things mm-hmm. like that? Yeah. Tell me about how you felt when you would volunteer your time. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. I did it when the kids were all in school. Uh-huh. I, I volunteered at a hospital mm-hmm. and just... Mm-hmm. Well, and at one point, even when I was a teenager, I worked at a hospital and I worked in the snack counter. Okay. So I still met a lot of people and it was really fun to do that. Uh huh. So you like the the part piece, the social piece of mm-hmm. it, being able mm-hmm. to give back mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. volunteer your time. Mm-hmm. Well, I would encourage you to kind of hold that same feeling inside of you when you're thinking about asking people for rides or asking people for help, that that same feeling that you have when you're volunteering your time and you're giving back, that feeling of you feel like you're, um, you have purpose and you're really making a difference in someone's mm-hmm. lives. My guess is that some of those people in your life feel that way about supporting you. 
That would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll try that. Okay. <laughs> um, one of the things that we haven't talked about yet is um, your experiences sharing your diagnosis with other people. And when we first met together today, you were telling me that on the one hand, you felt really scared because you didn't have a lot of information. And on the other hand, you felt relieved to know this mm-hmm. is why I'm having these symptoms and this is what's happening. And I'm curious about what your thoughts are about sharing this news with other people in your life. Um, actually, I kind of find it important now mm-hmm. because there are things I can't do and, and things I don't have answers to. Mm-hmm. And so if I let them know ahead of time that I have some memory impairment, then it's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And they will ask if I understand this or if I don't. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just a whole lot easier to let them know up front Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. I have a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think being open about your diagnosis Mm -hmm. and sharing your feelings and your experiences certainly will hopefully encourage other people to seek more information Mm -hmm. about dementia Mm -hmm. and and find more ways that they can support you. Mm -hmm. One thing I do have a concern, or not a concern, but just we've, I've noticed that some people are very uncomfortable Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with when you share that, then right away, well, do you think she'll remember me? Yeah. That's, that's, that's one of the first questions that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so there's a fear Mm -hmm. almost. And we're finding that we want to be able to educate and help people know that, she, yes, she'll still remember you, everything's okay, but um, just so that they understand. Yeah. But there's an automatic assumption, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that you bring that up because mm-hmm. people often have very mixed reactions, and some mm-hmm. people may shy away when they hear the word Alzheimer's mm-hmm. or dementia because of fear or misunderstanding about the disease or maybe their own experiences with a family member Mm -hmm. who's been diagnosed with dementia. And one of the things that other families I've worked with have found helpful is to um, either have a letter or an email or have um, maybe something that they can give to the people who they're telling this news to so that um, they can learn a little bit more about dementia. Mm -hmm. And I think just like you were saying, it's important for you, you feel really strongly about sharing your experiences, Mm -hmm. um, that when you share the news with people, it's an opportunity to bring awareness and education about what it's like to live with dementia. Mm -hmm. And, um, And I think that the more comfortable you feel, it may put them at ease a little bit more Mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So it might be an education opportunity. That's really good to have something to give people so that they can learn more rather Mm -hmm. than go with the assumptions that assumptions that they already have. Right. There are so many myths out there about Alzheimer's disease and assumptions that people make. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important to um, to have something. So maybe that's something we can work on together. Uh, maybe a little um, a packet that you can give to someone or information or even draft a letter together mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. things that you'd like to communicate mm-hmm. with someone about dementia. Mm-hmm. That would be really helpful. Okay, really well, helpful. we can certainly work on that together. Um, something that you mentioned earlier, Colleen, that I'd like to go back to, if that's okay with you, um, you mentioned having uh, low blood sugar. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the things I think it's really important to talk about with a diagnosis like dementia is how to manage the other chronic conditions that, that you have. Mm-hmm. So maybe you can tell me a little bit about how you're managing uh, other medications you're taking right now. Um. The, the medications, I, I don't take a lot, but there are some that I do take. And um, the ones that I'm comfortable dealing with, I put in a dispenser. Mm-hmm. And okay. so I know which day I'm supposed to take what. Mm-hmm. Because I, I have a yellow one for morning and a blue one for evening. Mm-hmm. So then I, I take care of that. But my husband takes care. Um, I had atrial flutter last year. And so my husband takes care of those medications, and he gives them to me every morning and every evening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are really important ones to make sure you take the right Mm -hmm. dose and at Mm -hmm. the right time every day. And Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like you've done a good job of partnering with him with some of those medications. Mm -hmm. And and some of them you're doing on your own, and some of them he's... The ones I do, I've taken for years, so 
Mm-hmm. I just and I've always put them in a dispenser because mm-hmm. otherwise I don't know if I've taken them or not. <laughs> yeah, so that's one way to stay organized. Mm-hmm. Another coping strategy. Mm-hmm. It sounds like you've used. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's really great. Mm-hmm. Do you have a list of all of the medications you're taking that you use to bring with you to doctor's appointments? Yes, I do. Okay. And I have a copy of that as well, and we work on it together. And so we can do med check, um, check Mm -hmm. to make sure her dispensers are all Mm -hmm. right uh, on the weekends Mm -hmm. because it's Saturdays. Is it Saturdays? Yeah. Yeah. They they get filled. Yeah. And so we have a list of so we know. Yeah, what you guys are right. one step ahead of me. You're on the ball. <laughs> I've done it's it her. for years. <laughs> I'm, I'm very organized with most mm-hmm. things, and mm-hmm. I I want to do them in the order they're supposed to be done and yeah. when they're supposed to be done. Mm-hmm. Did you I'm have lucky. to use a lot of organization skills in in your line of work when you were working? Um, pretty much so, but yeah. um. Most of it I've just done on my own. Just your personality. It's, that's just me. Yeah. You like to be organized. Everything's organized alphabetically. And mm-hmm. Her cupboards, her spices, alphabetically. My files. Everything. My yes, files. Everything. My recipe cards. Yeah. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Well, that'll uh-huh. certainly help you keep track of things and mm-hmm. keep things straight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we can help her, too, because it is so organized. Mm-hmm. If things get out of place, yeah. we know how to help her put it back mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. Well, it so. sounds like you have a really supportive family, Colleen. I do. They're yeah. wonderful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What other things are helping you cope emotionally with, with this new diagnosis? Um, I think just reading, reading and learning more about it. Mm-hmm. Your, mo- your morning reading, your um, Kindle? Yes. I, the first thing I do in the morning when I open my eyes is read my Bible. Mm-hmm. I have done that for a long, long time, and it's just easier with a Kindle because mm-hmm. <laughs> it's right there in the right spot, and yeah. I know where I started and left off. So, mm-hmm. so doing a daily devotion in the mm-hmm. morning is something. It sounds like that really helps you get your day started yes. and helps you get. On I don't the right do track. anything before I read that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see that's really important to you, and I think that's really. I'm really glad to hear that that's something you've been doing for many years and Mm -hmm. it sounds like that's Mm -hmm. something that you've used to really lean on for support and for strength very Mm -hmm. much so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and even with with dad i mean in when when there are hard emotional times what is calming reading scripture Mm -hmm. together Mm -hmm. yeah so we do have some tools to Mm -hmm. to kind of refocus and when he comes home after dinner we read again. Mm-hmm. We read where his, he's at in his Bible. Uh, <laughs> so in the morning you get your time in, and then in uh-huh. after dinner then mm-hmm. you, you join him mm-hmm. at his time. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's great. Good. What a neat tradition to have together. Yeah, it's I, really nice. I bet that's brought you a lot closer over the years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's very important to both of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's great. Mm-hmm. So um, what are the things that should we consider that we need to be aware of? Mm. One of the things that families consistently tell me over time that they're really glad that they did in the very beginning was to meet with an elder law attorney and to do some of the legal and financial planning. That's really important. Mm. Have the, has your family uh, met with an elder law attorney before? No. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm wondering if that might be a really good place to start. Okay. Um, I have a form here that is a power of attorney form. And what that means is that if for any reason you are unable to make decisions for yourself, that you would appoint someone that you trust, that you're comfortable with to make those decisions for you. And so I'll give you this form. So that's maybe okay. something to look over okay. before you're meeting with the attorney. But I think that that would be a really good next step. Okay. What are good. your uh, thoughts about that? I think it's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That's just good. Okay. One thing I don't think we asked about, but what about progression? Mm-hmm. What should we, what should we expect? Yeah. Well, the good news about Alzheimer's disease is that by definition, it's a slow and gradual progression. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to notice huge changes from one day to the next, mm-hmm. but over time it will continue to get worse. And so I'll give you this information here on understanding the stages of Alzheimer's disease, Mm -hmm. and that might be some reading you can do after our meeting today. Okay, good. Good, this is really helpful. Yeah, sure. 
I think um, something too for, for you both to know that I just mentioned that sometimes um, people notice something that's acute, something that uh, comes up that's unusual, something that's new, and that would be a good time to call the doctor or call the nurse line um, because uh, you're not going to notice huge changes from one day to the next. And so if there's something acute that comes up, I would encourage you to reach out to the doctor. Okay. And um, I know that you have a doctor's appointment coming up in the next couple of weeks. And um, mm -hmm. some information I'd like to share with you is how important it is to really be an active participant in your appointments with your doctor, to really get the most out of your time with them. Okay. And one of the ways to do that is over um, over the course of time before your doctor's appointments is writing down any concerns that come up that you're noticing, kind of your top three concerns, so that when you go to your doctor's visit, you have that right in front of you. I don't know about you, but oftentimes I'll leave the doctor and think, gosh, I forgot to ask them that question, or mm -hmm. I really wanted to bring this up and I forgot, mm -hmm. and then you're not seeing them again for another six months. Mm -hmm. And so it's a good idea to write down what your concerns are before you go into the doctor so that you can make sure that they're addressing the top issues you want to talk about. And okay. then to take notes during your doctor's appointment too. I know it's easy to leave and mm -hmm. think, was I supposed to pick something up at the pharmacy or was I supposed to get a blood drawn? So that way if you're taking notes or if you have a care partner with you at your doctor's mm -hmm. appointments to have an extra set of ears to hear the information, that's a really good way to keep track of what's coming up next and how mm -hmm. to manage your health care. Mm -hmm. She's been really good about having one of us go with her recently mm -hmm. just so that we can... Always, yeah, because I just... Help to remember what the doctor says. Mm -hmm. So we'll, yeah. we'll, maybe that will be good for us to take the notes so then it's in writing for you mm -hmm. later, mm -hmm. too. And then yeah. it's yes. um, concrete. Yeah, and then you can just sort of be at ease during the doctor's visit and not have to feel like you're remembering everything that they talked about. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's something that I'll do uh, for you after our visit today. I'll write up a summary of everything that we went over and kind of the next steps that we talked about, um, like the driving and transportation options. I'll give you a copy of those. We'll put together a packet together that you can give to someone when you're sharing the news of your diagnosis so that they have more information. Mm -hmm. And then um, okay. a, a couple of names of elder law attorneys okay. um, to do some of that legal and financial planning. And um, you have the Living Well workbook that we went mm -hmm. over about mm -hmm. the, um, what's been shown to help slow down the progression of, of dementia, the physical activity, mm -hmm. getting good nutrition, and then working that brain muscle. So doing uh, activities, um, keeping your brain active and doing new things, trying new recipes and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Colleen, do you think that you would ever be interested in participating in a, in a clinical trial or research? I think so, yeah. possibly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, there's a really good website that you can use called Trial Match. And when you create an account on Trial Match, it's free. And you put down your information. And then if there's a research study that you're eligible for, they'll contact you. So it's not like you're agreeing to do anything or committing to anything. And not all of them are pharmaceutical. Some of them, like right now, for example, there's a study going on about aerobic exercise in people who are living with dementia. Mm -hmm. So that there's other things that are going on that might be interesting to you. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe I'll give you the flyer on that, and then okay. you can decide what you want to do. Mm -hmm. That would yeah, be, be good. good. Okay. Well, we've talked about a lot of different things today. We've talked about driving, sharing your diagnosis with family and friends. We've talked about strategies and ways that you're coping with living with dementia and dealing with your memory loss. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about ways to manage your medications, things that you're already doing now that are helpful, and then <coughs> new ways to partner with your doctor to be a, an active partner in your as a part of your healthcare team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like I said, I'll send you a summary of everything that we talked about today, and um, you'll have other resources for ways to get information, and you have things to read following our visit today, but um, I'll be here as a resource for you along the journey. And so feel okay. free to reach out and call me or email me anytime. Wonderful. Sounds great. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. It was a pleasure meeting the both of you today. You as well. All Thank right. You. Well, you two take care. All right. Thank, Thank you very right. much. Bye-bye.